Melatonin is the most important antioxidant, not glutathione. All right, so this topic is probably the most important video that you will ever listen to regarding your health. I didn't know what to call it, so I titled it the most important antioxidant is melatonin, not glutathione. But this information is completely brand new. You've never heard of this before, and it's very important information. So in this video, I'm going to review melatonin and all its wonderful uses. Melatonin is a hormone secreted by the pineal gland in the brain, and it helps regulate other hormones and maintain the body's circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is this internal 24-hour clock that plays a really important role when we fall asleep and when we wake up. Basically, when it's dark, your body produces more melatonin, and when you're exposed to light, the production of melatonin drops. I would like to say that with cortisol. Cortisol is like the sun and melatonin is like the moon. Cortisol should be high through the day and melatonin should be high through night. If you're exposed to bright lights in the evening or too little light during the day, you may have abnormal levels of melatonin. Jet lag, shift workers, and poor vision can all be a real problem with melatonin cycles. The main hormone just before melatonin on the steroid pathway is serotonin, and it takes two different SNPs to make a melatonin. If you find this information useful, please tap the like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button to stay updated with healthy and beauty tips. If there's a problem with one of those SNPs or with your serotonin levels, you may have a problem with your melatonin. Melatonin is a really important antioxidant and has a number of responsibilities besides just helping you sleep. For example, melatonin helps control the timing and release of your female reproductive hormones, same for men. It helps determine when a woman starts to menstruate, the frequency and duration of her cycle, and when she stops menstruating and goes into menopause, if her circadian rhythm is off, she may start to notice that her menstrual cycle is off. Also, preliminary evidence suggests it can really help strengthen the immune system. It may also help lower the HDG levels. Low levels of melatonin may contribute to high levels of HCG, which you don't want. While more research is needed, several studies have shown that melatonin may have cardioprotective properties because of its antioxidant and inflammatory effects. For example, it may help lower blood pressure levels and it might help improve cholesterol profiles. Melatonin is critical for making, secreting, and acting on insulin. How insulin is really important for blood sugar management, the action of melatonin regulates the expression of this particular transporter called a glut or glucose type 4, and this triggers phosphorylation of the insulin receptor. When you have a reduction in melatonin, you may get an increase in insulin resistance. The more insulin resistance you have, the more likely you are to go on to develop diabetes and of course excess weight gain, especially around the middle. Melatonin is really important for making sure this doesn't happen. It's often said that sleep is crucial for healthy weight management, and this may be a reason why because of its antioxidant status. Melatonin is also researched in the oncology field as it's known that those women with breast cancer often have lower melatonin levels as do men with prostate cancer. Be aware that melatonin is also made 400 to 500 times more from the enterochophamin cells in the gut than the pineal gland. When you have gastrointestinal upset or distress, melatonin is made to act as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory right in your GI tract. Now, common reasons for higher melatonin could be that you just make higher levels of melatonin. Some people just have really robust levels. Be aware though that stress can midly raise melatonin. It's an antioxidant and it's anti-inflammatory. Those people taking melatonin will show high levels of melatonin as a result. Gut inflammation will raise melatonin again as it is protective of those people taking 5-HTP or SAMI or tritophan supplements may have higher levels of melatonin because they're raising their serotonin. It's debated, but certain SSRIs that are used for depression may raise melatonin levels. The birth control pill has been shown to slightly raise melatonin and certain foods are high in melatonin such as cherries, walnuts, mustard corn, rice, ginger, peanuts, barley, oats, asparagus, and tomatoes. 
Now, what can cause low melatonin or suppress melatonin? Well, of course, the number one thing is exposure to blue light at night. For those people that put on their phones and their computers and their tablets, consider cutting out those things about an hour before bedtime or buy those blue light blocking glasses that have the orange frames so that you don't get an increase in cortisol and suppression of melatonin right before bed. Caffeine will raise melatonin. Tobacco will raise melatonin. If you have mutations and those two genetic SNPs are one of them, known as the AAA, NAT, and the other one is known as the ASMT, those are the SNPs that move from serotonin to melatonin. If you have a problem, then there you won't be able to make melatonin genetically. Again, SSRIs, specifically Prozac or Fluoxidine, are shown to suppress melatonin. Calcium channel blockers for blood pressure, such as Verapamil or Diltiazem, they suppress melatonin. Beta blockers like Atenolol, Metropolis, Prattle, and other NSAIDs, those of you who are taking aspirin or ibuprofen, Aleve, Motrin, Advil, especially in later in the day when you're trying to go to bed, you may have decreased levels of melatonin as well. When you're looking at different melatonin tests, more so the Dutch test, it reports melatonin is pulled off the waking sample. Now, this is confusing to a lot of people why the waking sample is pulled off when you're looking at urinary hormones. What happens is that melatonin is made through the...